Good evening, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. This is Rich again, back for your third and final video blog of the night for October 7, 2014, around 8.45 p.m. in Bellica, Massachusetts. Crickets are chirping because it's a warm night tonight, and we're going to have some rain, heavy rain, that is, in the overnight hours and first thing tomorrow morning. We could be in bed thunder, thunderous showers and heavy wind, so be careful First thing tomorrow morning, some news to report. The St. Louis Cardinals beat the Los Angeles Dodgers by the score of 3-2 in Game 4 of the NLDS. The Cardinals are advancing to the League Championship Series. Three games to one, they beat the Dodgers. Dodgers H ace pitcher Clayton Kershaw lost two games in the League Division Series. He was a dominant pitcher in the regular season, but in the playoffs, he stunk it up. And this could be the final time managed um don manley manager of the uh, dodgers will manage the team because he's on a hot seat and he could get fired because the dodgers had the talent to go to the world series and also vin scully last game he's calling tonight for the season wish he could call a world series games one of these days before he passes away and next year um, vin is only going to call dodgers games at dodger stadium and and LA and also Anaheim when the Dodgers play the Angels and in Interleague series. And also the Boston Bruins have announced they put center David Krejci on the injured reserve list for an undisclosed injury and David Krejci will be out of action for at least seven days. And also ABC has announced they're going to make a sitcom about the classic 1989 movie Uncle Buck starring John Candy. Uncle Buck was a great movie, one of the most funniest movies of all time, and they tried to make a television series out of Uncle Buck in 1990 on CBS, but that was flop big time. It got bad ratings, and ABC's gonna make do it again. They're not. They're not gonna. It's not gonna be a hit, in my opinion. It probably will only last maybe a handful of episodes before it gets canceled. And that's about it on that. And my third and final video blog subject of the night is about my personality profile, and it's about Craig McTavish. Craig McTavish played 17 seasons in the NHL. He was the last player to play in the National Hockey League without a helmet. Craig was born in London, Ontario, Canada, and he played junior hockey. He was a center. He went to UMass Lowell, and he played for the UMass Lowell Chiefs. Then, they were called Chiefs then, now they're called the River Hawks from 1977 to 1979. He was drafted by the Boston Bruins in 1978. He was ninth round, 153rd overall pick. And he, and he played two seasons in college for the UMass Lowell Chiefs. And then he didn't go back for his junior or senior year and he signed with the Boston Bruins. He split three years between the Boston Bruins and the minor league affiliates of them in the NHL. He, he was like a decent player, but he wasn't that good to make the NHL. He finally got called up for good in 1982 season. He played two seasons with the Bruins. He had a 20-goal season with the Bruins in 1983-1984, but an incident happened on July, I mean January 25th, 1984, for like he caught, he was under the influence of drinking too much and he caused an accident that killed a 26 year old wo woman and he was arrested, charged with DUI and also the irregular homicide. He was convicted and he spent a year in jail. He missed the entire 1984-1985 season while being in jail. And then the Bruins released him and then he signed with the Edmonton Oilers and for the next eight, eight years, he was with the Oilers. He wore number 14. He was he had some decent seasons with the Oilers. He was, uh, you know, third-line center, and he was a consistent 20-goal score. He played five straight years every single game. And he was, he won three Stanley Cups with the Oilers. And he was actually captain of the Oilers from 1992 to 1994. But then he got traded to the New York Rangers, and he won his fourth Stanley Cup with the Rangers. And he bounced around Flyers and St. Louis Blues. He retired after the 1996-1997 season, 
and he was the last player not to wear a helmet in NHL games because he was drafted in 1978, and in 1979, every player who came into the National Hockey League had to wear a helmet, so he was grandfathered in. His career stats, 1,093 games, 215 goals, 267 assists, 480 points. Those are not Hall of Fame stats, and he's never been considered for the Hall of Fame. And after he retired, Craig McTavish became an assistant coach. He spent two years as an assistant coach with the New York Rangers, then with the Edmonton Oilers for one year, and he became coach for, of the Oilers in 2000. He coached the Edmonton Oilers for eight seasons, compiling a 301, 252, 47 ties and 56 shootout overtime or shootout losses. He led the Oilers to the Stanley Cup playoffs in 2001, 2003, and 2006. 2001 and 2003, they were bounced in the first round by the Dallas Stars. 2006, he led the Oilers to Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals against the Carolina Hurricanes. The Oilers were the 8th seed out west, but they went on an amazing one, one being the Red Wings, Sharks, and Ducks. And But that was the last time the Oilers made the playoffs in 2006. And, and Craig was fired in 2009 after the Oilers failed to make the playoffs three straight years. He goes down as the second winningest coach in Oilers history behind um, Glenn Seda. And then Craig stayed doing hockey. He worked for TSN. That's the, e that's the version of of ESPN in Canada for two years in, as an NHL commentator. He kind of was a little bit humorous with his commentaries, which was pretty good and stuff like that. And then he went back to coaching. He coached at AH, AHL Chicago Wolves, which was affiliated with the Vancouver Collects for one year, 2011-2012. And then he returned to the Edmonton Oilers as Senior Vice President of Hockey Operations in 2012. And he added the title of Oilers General Manager in 2013. And he, Craig is probably a, like a hockey lifer. There were some rough roads that, for 1984-1985 when he was thrown in jail and stuff like that. That could have destroyed his career, but the Oilers gave him a second chance and he flourished with that well. He's probably maybe one of the most famous Edmonton Oilers of all time, second tier one. I'm surprised that the Oilers have not retired his number 14 yet because he was kind of a one of those unsung heroes, like kind of like a seventh player player for the Oilers. There was an award for unsung hero. He probably won it a few times with the Oilers, and he's one of the most famous players in UMass Lowell hockey history who made the NHL and had a successful successful career. The only other person. Only players that have had very successful NHL careers I can remember, besides Craig McTavish, was goaltender Dwayne Wilson. And and Craig's trying to make the Oilers competitive again, trying to make lead them to the playoffs again as a um, vice president of general manager. I wouldn't be surprised again if he, he steps behind the bench and coaches the Oilers. Maybe that's what the Oilers need Craig McTavish back as coach. They could be a contender again in the Western Conference, but that's light years away. And that's it on him. It's good to do profiles about anybody and everything. There will not be a profile tomorrow because that's going to be having a day off. Tomorrow, my subjects are going to be the top 10 Major League Baseball play-by-play -play announcers who should be in the Hall of Fame, also my week six NFL predictions, and my third and final video blog will be about the classic game show Beat the Clock. And don't forget Facebook friends and YouTube followers, coming soon, more blogs, more of the rest of the week, the top 10 will be Thursday. Thursday, the top 10 video games of all time, and Friday will be the top 10 NFL play-by-play -play announcers who should win the Pete Wazell Award for Broadcasting Excellence. And don't forget, the blogs are coming. Uh, the personality profile blogs are coming soon. Julie Broughton, Heidi Lee Pratt, Janelle Tobin, 
um, Crystal Pistol, D. Patel, Tony Ramos, Bruce Cronin, Angelo, Donald Beauregard, and many others. And have a good night, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. And don't forget, send me your questions, private message me on Facebook or YouTube, and it will be answered in a in a first ever question and answer blog sometime in November. I'm not going to tell you when it's going to be in November. Good night, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. See you tomorrow.